Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Elliott Confidential Podcast. I'm Aaron Elliott here with Christopher Elliott. How are you doing? I am doing good. We are in Christchurch, New Zealand, Christ. or as they like to call it here, Chucha. They abbreviate it yes. Chucha. Chucha. It's like Switzerland, C H, except they double it's that. Two cheese C H is right. Yes. We should probably explain that Aiden is not with us today, unfortunately, because he's having a little bit of a hard time getting used to the new time zone here. We were in Melbourne, and uh, it's a two-hour time difference. And he just, um, instead of going in the right direction, he went in the wrong direction. So I think he's now in the Perth time zone. Oh, well. But also, we had that really long flight. So you got to give him that. It's a three and a half hour flight. No, no, no. Like, we got here at, like, 1 a.m. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that that's was pretty, not fun. pretty bad. Um, it's, uh, this is going to be a, one of the more interesting podcasts. Not just because it's only the two of us doing it, but because there's a lot of uh, really interesting things that have happened to us and i should start by saying that that this is um we're doing something we probably shouldn't be doing today well what's that well i think the best way of explaining is just to tell the story so about six months ago i got an email from new zealand tourism and they invited us to come to new zealand and as a travel journalist i do work with pr people and i was uh Really, I was delighted that they invited me here because I knew I was going to be in Australia. And I thought, well, we should do New Zealand too. It's an interesting place. I've heard a lot of good things about it. And so we corresponded briefly. And I said I, we're going to be in New Zealand in uh, about six months. And they said, great, when you're ready, let us know. And so I reached out to them when we were in Perth, which is about three months ago. And I said, hey, we're coming. And they did not respond. Um, after a while, they just dropped off and they stopped responding completely. And by that time, we had already made plans to go to New Zealand. So uh, we are here on an unsanctioned, unapproved visit. We are not, we're here as civilians. We're not getting any kind of assistance or support from the tourism folks. And normally, at the very least, you can rely on someone like saying, hey, you know, if you're in town, well, let's get together for coffee and I'll tell you what the places they are that you should check out and maybe make an interesting story. But we haven't heard the Christchurch tourism people have literally have never responded to any of my emails and the New Zealand people have not responded to my last two or three emails. So we are here on an unsanctioned visit. And in a moment, Aaron, I will tell you why I think they haven't responded. So, but until, until then, this week's question is, have you ever been to a forbidden destination. I'm talking about places like North Korea or Cuba, places that Americans are not allowed to go to, or just a place that people in your life said, you should never go there because it's bad, you, you know, the people there are terrible or it's not worth visiting. Hmm. Tell us about your forbidden visit and we will, as always, read your uh, emails in, and comments in our next podcast. <laughs> Yep. All right. Well, with that being said, what do you think of Christchurch? Um, I love Christchurch. It's great. <laughs> it's so different from Australia. It's they talk very similar, but that's about where they, the differences end, or where the similarities yeah. end. I should say it's it's uh, really uh, it's pretty cool. What do you think? Well, I like Christchurch a lot. I mean. For me, I remember yesterday morning I woke up and I went walking around the city and I said, you know what, this reminds me of Europe. And no other city in Australia had done that with mm -hmm. me. So this place is very clean and it's, goodness, it's basically Switzerland of, um, you know, the Pacific. Yes, exactly. That's what I was thinking too. So let's go back a little bit then because we left Melbourne, we were in St. Kilda uh, that was, you know, we, we had good things and bad things to say about uh, Melbourne. And then we got on a plane. Uh, we didn't think that we were going to make it. I thought that they weren't going to let us into the country. I mean, I, I get a little paranoid before I travel. But they're very strict about paperwork because they want to make sure that you're not going to move to New Zealand. So you have to have proof of outbound travel. Anyway, long story short, we made it. We got over. It was a three and a half hour flight. We landed here at, what, 1.30 in the morning? We were our flight yeah. was a little bit delayed. Yeah. And we get to our place. We're staying in a, a little Airbnb right near the park. And so here we are, and we wake up the next morning, and what did we see here? Well, I mean, we just walked around. I think that 
there's a, well, for us, we're right next to a park, Hagley Park. Yeah. And so it's an enormous park. And um, also, this place has just a, it's a very different scene than uh, any other part of Australia. You don't have any eucalyptus here, really. I, I could be wrong about that, but you have really, this, this theory that eucalyptus is poisoning yeah. people and making them crazy. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> that's the, that's my theory because the thing is, people here are just so much more nice yeah. than they were in Australia. Yeah. But also, you know, it's just this is really just a great place to walk around. So much better traffic. Walking around here is infinitely better. When we were in Melbourne, we would wait sometimes five minutes at a crosswalk which is just ridiculous. And if we tried to cross, we were afraid they were going to try to run over us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there was, it was not as pedestrian friendly as Christchurch. Christchurch is very pedestrian friendly. And it looks like uh, since the earthquake that they had, they've been using all of this, basically all of the buildings that are in this prepare, they're going to knock them down and they're going to make the city even more pedestrian friendly, mm -hmm. put in more works and things like that, which is really great. I mean, right now, if you go here, it doesn't look that great because there's a bunch of graffiti sprayed buildings. But really, it's uh, yeah, those the, are the earthquake city's damaged great. buildings. So there, there was an earthquake, I think, in 2012. Yeah, it has nothing to do with urban decay, I'm sure. Yeah, no. uh, I should set the scene a little bit because we're here and we, we landed and we went from the very volatile weather that they had in Melbourne to really pleasant kind of fall weather. And so here we are. It is early fall in Christchurch. The leaves are starting to come off the trees. They're turning yellow and gold. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they have an enormous park in Christchurch. Yes. And it, in that park, they have a botanical garden that's oh, free. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's crazy. So beautiful. We were just walking through there. And for whatever reason, one of their trees just started, um, I don't know, sporing everywhere, yes. if that's even a word. So there's this Smoke. huge cloud of green coming off of this tree. It was ridiculous. I yeah. had, we had no idea that that was going to happen, but real treat. It's uh, it's so it's like a, a cross between an English village and Middle Earth. Like that's what they call <laughs> this place is Middle Earth because it's that's where they filmed uh, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. But it is truly it's it's familiar and yet completely alien. But I want to talk about the people that we've met here. Uh, we have met quite a few New Zealanders or Kiwis as they like to call themselves. And they are not at all like Australians. They speak very similarly, but they're not quite the same. But they also act like like no one else that we've, I don't think, ever met. Uh, what are the uh, New Zealanders like? Well, they're not like Australians. I'll say that. Okay. So they're not going to run you over. So far, we haven't had any such experiences. And they just seem relatively more pleasant and laid back than... Um, than Australians, much more so, I would actually say, not just relatively. And so it's just nicer being around here when you're, when you're having service uh, like at a restaurant or, or any place like a clothing store. People just seem to be more polite. Yeah, we haven't really yeah. sat down at a restaurant. We've, we've been to the, the food market. Yeah, Riverside Market. The, that's a nice place. Which is like our favorite hangout now. The Riverside Market is an, like an indoor market here. And what we've found, what i found, is that people are genuinely nice. They smile at you. Um, they, uh, they are as helpful as they possibly can be. And they just seem really, really pleasant. And the closest that I can get to in terms of comparing it to Australia is when we were in Hobart and in, uh, in Tasmania, they, they were getting close to it. It's kind of an island thing where they're just not, it's not the big city. People are very friendly. And in Hobart, we, we did get uh, a little, people were a little bit more friendly. But here, it's orders of magnitude friendlier. And I can see why this is a favorite destination for Americans is that people here are just so nice. Plus, also, the cost of living is so much lower. I mean, everything here is very inexpensive. Yeah. So we're running a rate of like 20, uh, sorry, 20 New Zealand dollars is about 12 and a half US dollars. Mm -hmm. So everything is cheaper, basically. When you see something that costs like 15 New Zealand dollars, it's like, it's really cheap. Uh, this is bordering on like South Africa prices, which are very inexpensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, friendly people, beautiful scenery, 
uh, inexpensive prices, and we should also add highly developed. Like it's on, if, if you look at the Human Development Index, it's like on a, on a level of Switzerland or somewhere in Central or Western Europe. Mm, yeah, it's much better than Melbourne, for, uh, for example. Um, Melbourne was extremely gritty compared to this. Brisbane, even, even more developed than Brisbane, I would say, because they really have a hold on pedestrian traffic. It's so much more walkable. And um, I don't know exactly how it is for cars, but I can see that, you know, they have a park, they've got... So from our, from our perspective as tourists and as people who don't have cars, significantly more developed than some, some place like uh, Brisbane, Melbourne, um, even Perth. Yeah, or other places that we've been to. I mean, um, South Africa. We've we've there are similarities between here and South Africa because of the British influence, but it's nowhere near. I mean, it's just not even comparable in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so. Here's my theory, Aaron: is why did the tourism folks um, kind of fall off the map or stop responding to me? Well, one theory is that they read some of my stories and they said, oh, no, we don't want someone like this writing about um, New Zealand because they, maybe they saw some of my more critical stories. But I don't think that was it. I think that it's their job in tourism, as tourism promoters, and I use air quotes when I say promoters, is to keep people from writing about the destination because they don't want people coming here. And let me explain what I mean by that. When, when you come to New Zealand, they have to have, you have to show them proof of outbound travel. They don't want you staying here. Yeah. The reason why is it's such a desirable place that people come here and say, wow, it's beautiful, it's highly developed, it, it's inexpensive, I'm going to move here. Yes, and you're, uh, oh, it was Josh, right? Yeah, my How, cousin. How is he? Yeah, he's your cousin. He, he tried uh, hitchhiking here. Yeah, oh yeah, he's, he said he loved this place. Everyone mm. I've talked to, without exception has said, you know, you're going to love New Zealand. And they're absolutely correct. We've, uh, and, and I mean, we haven't even talked about the food yet, but the food has been really good. Oh yeah, it's not Australian food. That's <laughs> no. great. And I they mean, put sugar in everything. Yeah, so um, you want to talk about the food. We should talk about the food. So yeah. food is better. We already found a bakery that does like legitimate bread. Incredible, incredible bread. It does legit bread. And we've and this is all in uh what's the market called this is all in the riverside market yeah and that's cra that's the crazy part is it's all in one place but uh there's there are other places around here we haven't even really explored everything so there's a lot of good food here uh we went to this uh, indonesian restaurant in there uh just to try uh some of their food as like we had a sampler and um that was amazing and <laughs> yeah we and, did the food tour yeah we did the we food should tour. explain what the food tour is when we say we're doing a food tour in our family, it means that we're going to go someplace, we're going to order one dish. Usually it's at a food market or some kind of an outdoor farmer's market. We order one dish, we all try it, and then we go on to the next place and we try another dish so we can sample everything. And that's exactly what we did today. Exactly, exactly. So, so we did, we had Indian food, and then we also had, um, what is it, uh, uh, Indonesian food. Yeah, an Indonesian food. And then uh, we had, well, the, I don't know what the Buddha bowl would have some been. Some juice, some juice. It was a juice bar. It was pretty good, though. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. You didn't like it. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. But, but in any case, um, I, yeah, things are less expensive. The food is better, yeah. um, generally speaking. And you have this really developed central business district, which is great. Um, great it's a great walkable destination. Um, you have also a river that goes through everything. Oh, it's so, and you yeah. have people, and this is another thing, is you have kids, you have just kids enjoying themselves, walking around and uh, canoeing in the river. It's really amazing because I just, you don't see that level of recreation elsewhere, especially in Australia. You don't see like people just going out and enjoying themselves, but you do here, which is really yeah, a I, great thing. I mean, I saw some, uh, when we were in Tasmania, I saw some people that seem to be out, outdoors just kind of for fun. But um, it's not the same. There's a lot, I want to just say joy. There's a lot of joy that you see with people that are, they're very happy that they're in New Zealand. They, they're not, you know, depressed or thinking about, you, you know, you watch the news in Australia and you see people who are, you know, prone to fits of rage and throwing things at each other and 
There's, I haven't seen that. I mean, sure it exists, but I haven't seen that here yet. The other thing I wanted to mention, Aaron, is the, the, the museums. Uh, we've, there are museums here. We went to an art gallery today completely free. Uh, you just walk in and you see people there hanging out and enjoying themselves. And uh, it's really, mm -hmm. I, I've, the last place that I saw this many free museums was London. Yeah, yeah. True. So I think that the, the tourism folks uh, that are, I think they're doing their job, which is to keep people out of New Zealand. They don't want people to discover New Zealand. They don't want anyone to write stories or do podcasts on New Zealand. So I'm very, very sorry about that, guys, but we're doing a podcast on New Zealand. Yes, and I would also say if you're an American, definitely go to New Zealand <laughs> because it's just, especially Christchurch, we haven't been to Auckland yet. But Christchurch is really just a very nice place. And um, I don't know, uh, what place in the States would you liken it to? I don't know. It feels a little bit like Bend, Oregon. Ben, I was going to say Bend, Oregon. It feels a lot like Oregon where you have the, the, the river and a lot of people just hanging out and enjoying the recreation. And um, there's a, a similar feeling of maybe safety, you know, where it's, you know, there's not a lot of crime and... Um, and it's just very, you know, it's just kind of a, a clean place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, I think that it reminds me a little bit of, um, of Colorado. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, for example, in Colorado, you have, uh, uh, what is it, Boulder. And you can see, like, the uh, flat irons. And it's a, that's a pretty walkable place. It's not as walkable, but it reminds me a little bit of that. But certainly, I would say it also reminds me heavily of Switzerland because the mm -hmm. weather is like, it's a little bit warmer than Switzerland maybe, but uh, you have the, the hills, especially Zürich. I would say that you have the hills, you have the, uh, the river, um, and then you also have skiing nearby. Unfortunately, we're not going to be here for skiing season, but... Yeah, but we could, we're very close to the Alps. We flew over them on the way. We should talk about Air New Zealand too, because interestingly enough, now Air New Zealand is owned by the government, so maybe they're doing the same playbook, but Air New Zealand reached out to me about the same time that New Zealand Tourism reached out and said, hey, we would love to work with you, and uh, you know, we're, uh, let me know when, if you're going to be in New Zealand. Uh, we've, we actually, well, I, I shouldn't get this too far ahead. Uh, Air New Zealand also stopped responding to my emails when I said, yeah, we're coming. So I booked a ticket on Air New Zealand, you know, um, to, to fly from Melbourne to here. And we, we flew on Air New Zealand and it was a really, and maybe they don't want me to say this, but it was a really good experience. Well, I'd also say that uh, they have a really great scheme, like a, what is it, a theme for their, for their yes. flights. So they have, it's this, this very good color scheme of like, uh, I, you have to look at it online, but the, the scheme, uh, the way that the planes look, it's really nice. And then also you have access to, uh, there's a very interesting yeah, in flight entertainment. It's yes. funny. They have a very, they have a kid's map and for whatever reason on the kid's map, they allow you to like click on a destination and it'll show you a 3d model of some animal. So if you click on Australia, oh, that's what you guys were yeah, it's the kids at. map. Okay, okay. And so if you go click on Australia, it'll show you this kangaroo, this 3D model of a kangaroo. It's it's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so both New Zealand tourism and Air New Zealand uh, apparently do not want me to talk about their destination. And I'm talking about your destination. Actually, I'll be talking about it for the next couple of weeks because we'll be here uh, in. Uh, Christchurch, and then we're going to be going to the North Island after that. And so uh, good luck getting me to shut up about this. <laughs> we are definitely going to be talking, and there's so much that we're going to explore. And we're uh, very close to the Pacific, and then we have all these hills. So we're going to get out and try to really uh, explore the place. And mass transit here is not that expensive. You can get a bus for a couple bucks, and you can use your, um, you know, your phone to pay for yeah, it as well. Yeah, that was something they also had in Melbourne. Yeah, I love that. Well, Melbourne, say what you want about Melbourne. They had really great mass transit. I love that. Yeah, they had good mass transit unless you're a pedestrian. And in that case, it's just hell getting around. Yeah, best to not be a pedestrian in Australia because they, they don't... 
Everyone likes their cars. They don't like people walking across the yeah, street. Yeah, but of course, when you're using mass transit like um, like trams and whatnot, and then you're going to be on foot the rest of the time, and so that complicates things. But they do have good trams, totally. In our last podcast, we asked, "Have you ever visited a destination that defied an easy description?" And we were talking, of course, about our own experience in Melbourne. Uh, but people had other thoughts, and we had a ton of comments. So let me just get to a couple of those. Uh, Lorna said, The sunsets in Botswana have the most intense color. There's a mysterious attraction to Africa, which continues to cause one to yearn to return. And I know exactly what that feels like. And I know you do too, Aaron, because we've seen the beauty and the despair of Africa almost in the same place. Like, it's it's... A magnificent destination, but there's also so much that really is not so great. Yeah, it's true. I think that with with South Africa and uh, Botswana and Namibia, I hear there's so many really, really beautiful places to see. But also, it's like then you also have um, what do they call it? You have you know the settlement camps where you have a oh yeah bunch of poor people like Kailicha. Oh yeah, um, it's um. Oh, that was townships. Yeah, yeah that's town. what they call them. Sam said, I struggle to properly describe New Zealand because it's like everywhere on earth, but at the same time, like nowhere on earth, unless you're maybe watching a Lord of the Rings movie, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, we're, I think that's what the struggle we're having right now is to describe New Zealand or at least Christchurch because it, it's familiar and yet it's also very unfamiliar. Yeah, I think that that's totally true. I mean, it really... It, uh, it racks the mind because you try to think to yourself, oh, what is this place like? And you don't really know. It's just like New Zealand, I suppose. Carla says Churchill, Manitoba in winter is the worst place in the world, and it's also the best place in the world. It's desolate, isolated, depressing, exciting, and thrilling, and it's the land of the polar bears. Churchill was one of the places we wanted to go the last time we were doing. We did a cross-country road trip through Canada, and they had that train that goes up there. Yeah, really. And um, so we're um, one of the places that we're going to be going next year is Canada. And we're planning on doing a very slow trip across Canada during the summer. And Churchill is on our list. Wow. So. I'm just looking at that. That's like that's right right next to the Hudson Bay. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I, I, I wonder if you can get there by car. It doesn't look like you can get there by car, actually. Uh, I think you fly in usually, but yeah, the, the train takes a while. Yeah, they've the train, got a train. The train takes, I think, a day and a half or two days. Damn. It's a long train ride. Yeah, well, it kind of reminds me of when we were in Antarctica. And that that's like no place on Earth. I mean... Oh, yeah. Our really? Antarctica is so... I still struggle to believe that I actually saw that in person. Those icebergs, they look like... Yeah, just these castles of ice. Yeah, I mean, I remember when we were in Antarctica, and of course we were on a boat, and I just remember being inside the boat, and I sort of felt guilty not looking outside constantly. Yes, I know what that's like. <laughs> and so, you, I, but also you have to be careful, because if you look outside too much, then, you know, the UV is going to get you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ray Barb says Turkmenistan, those huge gold-plated statues, wide avenues, few cars, well-appointed bus stops with uh, newspapers to borrow. You can borrow newspapers and read while you're waiting. Buildings covered in marble. The cheerful and pleasant people. Not what I expected of a heavy-duty dictatorship. Oh, yeah. I'm just <laughs> looking right here at Turkmenistan. And yeah, oh, wow, look yeah, at that. Yeah, you've got it on your uh, computer. That's really pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, uh, I hear a lot of things about um, those sorts of dictatorships, especially where they have lots of oil. They get to just put that money in whatever they want. So if they want marble cities, I mean, they get marble cities. Yeah, there you go. Our old friend Bob says, our second in command is repatriating an Australian citizen to Melbourne this evening. It's never a problem finding one of our team willing to fly to Australia. Uh, look, Bob, we loved Australia and Melbourne was probably our favorite city. Uh, I, think, I think that's what we said, at least in our last podcast. Favorite big city, um, I mean, we, we also like Tasmania, but Hobart, I wouldn't call Hobart a big city. No, not a big city, but I would say it had like, it had a lot of culture. I would it say did, yeah. it, 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 between Melbourne and, uh, and Hobart, I would say that they kind of had the same amount of culture, though. 
which yeah. is I don't know. I think that if I had spent more time in in maybe downtown, maybe I would change my mind. But yeah, no, I feel like Hobart has a lot of, especially that museum there. I don't know. I, I count that the museum Mona, for having a lot. That Mona was amazing. The yeah. Mona was a really great yeah, right. museum. I would say it's probably better than the the Rhone that we saw. That that particular. Oh yeah, exhibit. yeah, that was easily the best museum. Was Mona best museum in Australia? And if not the region, is the Mona. And I think that we would have had a different opinion of Perth if we had stayed in Fremantle, because Fremantle has, it's got everything. It's got, you know, great food, walkable. The people there are really nice. And in Fremantle, just, yeah. In Fremantle. But we, we, you don't want to go to the suburbs and stay there because there's nothing for you out there. Yeah. Our question of the week, again, is tell us about your favorite forbidden destination. And it doesn't have to be uh, North Korea. I don't know how many of our listeners went to have gone to North Korea. I know we haven't been there yet, but you know it could be any anything. Maybe a place where everyone told you you wouldn't like it, but you did like it, or maybe you weren't allowed to go for maybe religious reasons, or like maybe you snuck into Mecca or something like that. Not that I would try that, uh, but you know maybe you went somewhere where you were not allowed to go. Uh, and and I'd I'd love to get your feedback. What did you think of it? So that's about it for us from Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, you are listening to the Elliot Confidential Podcast. Christopher Elliott and Aaron Elliott. Iden will join us again next week. This was a lot of fun, Aaron. Let's do it again soon. Yeah, that was fun. All right. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, have a great day. All right. Bye. Ciao.